Hi everyone, I'm Nancy. And I'm Stephanie. And if you enjoy our show, please like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. We're also on Instagram at Sidley Twins, and you can also find us on Twitter X. Well, I think it's no secret that I dislike Omid Scoby. <laughs> many, many of us. I think, can I say knob on YouTube? I think can so. I, can I call someone a knob? I think so. Okay. Can I call someone a wanker? I don't know. Okay. I know that's a, isn't that like the F word? I don't know. So I didn't, I didn't call him that. I just was asking, can I oh, call okay. someone that? He is all those things to me and more. This dude is, so, I can call him a scrub. He's okay. a scrub. Yeah. Okay. Omid Scobie put out more excerpts from his dumb ass book, Endgame. Oh my God. It's so ridiculous. Like you want to laugh at it. You mm -hmm. want to laugh at it because it's so funny how he makes such a big deal that like, he's not good friends with Megan. I know this is this, but yet in the excerpt, he says that, um, he heard from Kate's good friends. Really? Princess Catherine's friends are going to be talking to you directly or really Somebody is going to tell you what happened in the car ride from, remember their walkabout after mm -hmm. the queen died yeah. from there to back to Windsor Palace. You're right. Out of all the four people in there, Megan had nothing to do with it. Oh, so he's Her saying, hands are clean. So in his book, we know what happened on that, in that car ride. <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> let's get to the excerpts. Okay. Okay. And then this hogwash and, and then we can discuss it. Okay. Kate Middleton and Megan Markle's lack of communication during the Fab Four reunion the day after the Queen's death made for a silent car journey before their joint Windsor appearance bombshell book claims. Well, first of all, they came separately. Mm -hmm. They left together, but yeah. they came separately. I know this because I watched it like everybody else. <laughs> Endgame is set to unveil rift between Princess of Wales and Duchess of Sussex. Read more. Okay. So this is what we knew was going to happen. He is going to pin Megan and the Princess of Wales against each other because that is what Megan wants. She wants revenge. She wants everything the Princess of Wales has and she, more. She's looking for a good old fashioned cat fight. Yeah. And she's not going to get it. No. The reunion of the Fab Four Royals during a walkabout in Windsor the day after Queen Elizabeth passed away was preceded by a silent Car Journey, a bombshell royal book claims. Endgame by bleh, reveals how the appearance of Kate Middleton, Prince William, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle on September 9th, blah, 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 at Windsor Estate was orchestrated by the Waleses, press secretary Lee Thompson to keep up appearances. I don't believe that. I believe Prince William did that as a tribute and respect for his grandmother's legacy for being so forgiving and just such a beautiful yeah, person. He showed, he showed empathy that day and he showed it for the Commonwealth and he showed it uh, towards his brother as well. And that just made him more of a king that day. Yeah. That made him more of a man that day. So Omid talked to this Paris Match magazine. An extract from Endgame, which is published on Tuesday, yeah, claims that the silence was palpable during the 152nd car journey from their residences to the long walk, which he says must have taken an eternity. How does he know what? this? Who told him this? It, well, it's only the four of them that would know this information. <laughs> I mean, in particular, he drew attention to the lack of communication between Megan and Kate, I shall say Megan and the Princess of Wales, as well as the tension between Prince Harry and Prince William. It follows Prince Harry's own accounts in Spare. Well, we all knew that, you know, Spare was a big truth bomb too. He, so. didn't, he wasn't lying at all. Yeah, that. he didn't lie once. No. Which recounted that Megan had a strained relationship with his sister-in-law. The rift between them was laid bare when the Duke of Sussex yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore because it was a lie. That whole bridesmaid dress row yeah. was a freaking lie. So I'm not going to even, I'm not going to repeat stuff that we all that know was stupid. a lie, guys. 
He also detailed a disagreement over the shared lip gloss. That's also a lie. That was a lie because we all know that when you go to these events, Princess Catherine always has a person, her assistant, so does Megan, and they have extra everything, Kleenex, the makeup you're wearing, everything that you need. Visine. There is absolutely no way that the Princess of Wales, who doesn't even wear the shade no. as Megan, no. she wouldn't turn to her and ask her for lip gloss no. like they're at a slumber party. It doesn't work like that. She has an assistant that keeps everything. <laughs> Do you want the bu bubblegum flavor or yeah. you want the tro tropical fruit? Yeah. That's yeah. not how it is. Yeah. Elsewhere, Harry revealed how the Waleses were left annoyed when the Sussexes didn't buy their family Easter gifts. I'm sure they were heartbroken over that. Oh, it just ruined the whole day. Endgame is also set to deal with allegations of race and bigotry within the royal family. Stephanie, here we go again. There you have it. I didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that one coming down the pipe that he was going to bring up race in this book of his. What a shocker. Because that's all they have. But Harry said that the royal family wasn't racist. <laughs> Man, bigotry and race. What? God, Scobie, who wrote a biography of the couple finding freedom in 2020, unveiled the cover of his latest project this month, calling it, it's a penetrating, of course he's got to use the word penetrating, it's a penetrating investigation into the current state of the British monarchy. One chapter will be called Race and the Royals, Institutional Bigotry and Denial, and is likely to tackle claims of racism within the firm. What? Guys, A I'm telling piece you piece of poop. I mean, seriously, you guys think you're going to abolish the monarchy? Is that really what you're going to do? Yeah, Owen, is that like to do? You're going to use the word race and bigotry? You guys tried that three years ago. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. Americans didn't buy it. Can it, Canadians didn't buy that crap. Nobody bought that crap. You know why? Because the monarchy is going to be there forever. You want it like you're mad because the monarchy isn't being modernized. It is being modernized. You know, it just that it just is going to happen. And you magically. can't take this crap back. OK, yeah. Oprah's not even going to come and help you this time, guys. She's not going to get on her broom and fly in there and go, well, guys, let's all calm down. Yeah, this is crazy. No, this is absolutely bonkers. We're bringing up the same crap that Harry tried to debunk man. now. Oh man, bad things, bad karma, man. This is bad karma, karma for you, bud. I would love for there to be any proof because we've been told for years that there's emails, there's text messages, that there's actual proof of all this. Gail King said it. Her friend, um, uh, Je what's that girl's name? Um, oh, the the, the one who thing. was flirting with uh, uh, in the cult, Ben Affleck. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember yeah. her name. That's how unforgettable she She's is. She's in that cult. With Guys, her. where's the proof? Where's the proof? Scoby, forty-two. God, he looks older than forty-two. Didn't he say he was thirty-four like three years ago? Recollections may vary. Yeah. Scoby, forty-two, who was the royal executive editor of Yahoo News until July of this year, has also shared a sneak peek of what readers can expect from the book in a picture of his work posted to X Twitter. The front cover shows three royals. Yeah, we've all seen the cover. Um, I'll show it right now again if you guys haven't seen it. It's really dumb. The whole point of this book is to abolish the monarchy. Oh, yeah. He's been sent here by people that want to do that. A publishing source in America told the Mail on Sunday, the word is this is going to have bombshell after bombshell. Well, we've heard Gail and use that word a couple times. Oprah we? said it a few thousand <laughs> times. Yeah. Some are even speculating it may name the person who questioned what color Archie's skin would be. That will never happen. He's trying to get people. That's him trying to. That's called it. clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Stephanie, to some of the chapters. Ooh. Shaky ground. Ooh. The queen is dead. The monarchy faces trouble. The fall of Prince Andrew. Scandal, shame, and silencing Jane Doe. Race in the royals. Institutional bigotry and denial. Gloves on. Prince William heir to the throne. And gloves off. Prince Harry, man on a mission. 
So another person has been saying that they're they're painting Prince William as like the this mean guy. He's just so he's such a mean, hard headed guy, so much meaner than his dad. He's just yeah. going to be a cruel ruler. And that's what this book the is. Cruel King. The Cruel King. Publisher Harper Collins has previously said that the book will have the world talking. Oh my God. You mean his own publishing company that's trying to sell the book is saying that it's going to have the world talking? His PR people are Guys, saying that people are going to want to read this? This book is so going to bomb. In Finding Freedom, Scobie wrote in detail about the first night Megan and Harry spent together and recounted seemingly verbatim conversations between the Sussexes and senior royals. Oils. Yeah, because he got all that crap from Megan. And then later, Harry and Megan changed their story on how they met. They changed it. He changed it. She said they met in a blue, she wore a blue dress. He said that when they met, she was wearing t shirt and jeans in a book. Oh my God. People can't be this stupid, are they? I guess I just, they are. I guess they are. Yeah. He has continued to be a favored journalist for the Sussexes and is often the first to post information about their charitable endeavors and awards on social media. I don't think it can be any clearer at this point. I don't think it can be any clearer. Sounds to me like it's a pro Harry and Meghan book. I mean, I don't, okay, so how, how are we gonna do this guys? Who's gonna buy the book? And and print it off or read it to everybody or just get the important stuff. Yeah, out. I want the cliff notes. I swear to God, nobody better buy that freaking book. No one buys that book. <laughs> Don't buy the book. Let's have a pact right now. <laughs> yeah. As much as we want to read all the fluff, someone's Nobody's gonna, gonna have cliff it. notes. Someone's gonna have it yeah, like did, in USA Today. How did or we do spare? Spare was spare cliff was notes. Good. Yeah, they just cliff everybody notes. was like putting out the cliff notes. Yeah, like when he would do interviews, then we would like get little excerpts from yeah. it. So just stand, stand, stand back, guys. Don't buy the book. They won't. They yeah. won't buy the book. No one's gonna buy the book. Okay, so this is what uh, the media is saying about the book. Uh, more now from the controversial book written by Harry and Meghan's biographer. Omid Scobie claims that King Charles was in tears because he was worried about Prince Andrew's mental health following the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. Wait a second. How was he in tears over mental health? I thought that the royal family didn't prioritize mental health. Yeah, I thought they always like made fun of Harry and they and they told Megan that she didn't have any resources. Or they never talked about it. I'm confused. Scandal. Scobie also says it was Prince William more than any of the other senior royals who wanted Andrew to be marginalized. The author claims William is colder than his father. Okay, that's a total lie. Yeah. Because when the queen passed away, William drove his uncles and his aunt to Balmoral and he had Andrew in the front seat and he wanted, you know, he, they could have had their security drive them and they could have sat in the back, but he wanted to show strength that he was there, especially yeah. for Andrew, because out of all the kids, obviously Andrew was the baby. He was the closest to the queen. He lived with her. So, I mean, it's I, like- I don't like the word colder. I think Prince William is stronger than the king, but not colder than the king. Yeah. Okay, he's still kind. Yeah. I don't like that word. See how that word play does with Omen? Now he's trying to make people look stupid and mean. He's not mean. Well, I'm joined now by the former BBC Royal correspondent, the resplendent Jenny Bond. Jenny, it's always a fantastic pleasure to see you. So this book, Endgame by Scobie, is causing endless problems to the rules, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's already been described as a bombshell with all sorts of explosive allegations. Um, I really don't think it is. Haven't actually read anything that surprised me at all so far. Uh, you talk about Charles being allegedly in tears over Andrew's mental health. Well, um, Charles is a softy. He, he's always been a very sentimental sort of guy and Andrew is his little brother. And I, I don't think that uh, Charles is without feelings, but uh, how much he uh, really broke down in tears, I think, is unlikely to, to be true. I think probably that's exaggerated. I mean, you know, Charles had his 75th birthday party um, last week at Clarence House. And although we don't have confirmation of exactly who was there, there is no indication whatsoever that Andrew was invited uh, amongst this small group of relatives who were there. So I'm not quite sure how close they are. So basically, haven't seen much in this book that surprises me.
And the thing about this um, book, Jenny, of course, Scobie is the Sussex's lead cheerleader anyhow. So how much of this do you think is true and how much of it do you think needs a substantial pinch of sodium chloride? <laughs> well, Omid is very, very hot on the fact that he, this is not, he says, I'm not Meg's pal. Uh, this isn't to do with Harry and Meghan. Their story is only a small part of this book, which is curiously called Endgame. I mean, I don't know if in it, because we haven't seen the full book yet, is he predicting the end of the monarchy? I'm not quite sure. I mean, we learned that, that Meghan uh, was unhappy in the UK and has no intention of setting foot in the UK again, apparently. Uh, that's not really a surprise. That she didn't come to the coronation, not only because uh, it was Archie's fourth birthday, but uh, because she didn't want to step back into what she regards as the soap opera um, of the... That's the only way she can make money. You made it a soap opera, honey. <laughs> yeah. You did that. Royal family. Well, I think Harry and Meghan have got their own soap opera going on, actually, to be truthful. Um, so I don't see the bombshells in this, but it's routinely being described as such. So she goes on to just say, like, this is all hogwash anyway and blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much the consensus of Omid's book. I don't think Omid, like Meghan, is welcome back in the UK. And that's why I think he's trying to create a different image, because I have more pictures from his Instagram stories of him trying to be an LA dude influencer. And it's quite comical. Sure, dude. Here he is oh, being interviewed by, it obviously hasn't come out yet, but Good Morning America. You can actually see the GMA there. And uh, he's <laughs> he's got his kicks. He's got his kicks on. He's so Hollywood. Yeah, he's just a Hollywood guy. And there he is. He's just got his buff arms now. He's buff. He's got his book. Yeah. In, in the shot. Yeah. He's going to read from his book. Um, definitely, definitely trying to change his image. You can, I mean, it's just complete. He doesn't have glasses anymore. I mean, I don't know what he's trying to do. Here he is uh, taking a picture of his dessert because that's what influencers do. Oh, God. Wow. Oh, geez. And see what I'm talking about? He just with looks the, different. Like, he definitely looks like, I'm going to say allegedly, he's on some sort of protein powder or something because nobody gets a thicker neck, allegedly. What is that? You don't uh, just be, you just don't get a thicker hu neck. Human, human growth, growth hormones. hormones. Allegedly. I think that's what he's on. If I had to guess, allegedly yeah. human. But he definitely yeah. wants us to know, man. He's 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 in a he's he, California. Yes. Megan and Harry yeah. chilling out, and and Marcus Anderson. He might be in Marcus's pool now. Allegedly, I also think that he's gotten um, the lip filler as well. I think if I, think I had so. to guess, allegedly, yes. This isn't being mean. This is just years and years of us living in LA ourselves and just knowing the the signs of it. And especially since he's 42, mm -hmm. you know, you don't become that age and then get a thicker neck all of a sudden. <laughs> it just doesn't work. That's his cute little dog. He, had a, he does have a cute little Frenchie. But again, like I said, you don't bring your dog if you're only planning to stay in the States yeah. for a PR thing. And well, he's been there since June. So well, yeah. he definitely flew on a private jet. He did. He, sho state, he yeah. showed in June he was on a yeah. private jet. So that's why I think he hasn't left uh, any. I think I, I think he's going to just uh, stay there. He'll squat. <laughs> he's going to be like. He'll squat at the Soho he's, house. He's going to be like an Annie. I think I'm going to like it here <laughs> in our room. And uh, he managed to take a picture of something that he was watching on Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving movie, the only day it should be seen. I don't know what this movie is. Can anyone help me and tell me? Because I was, I, at first I thought it was V for Vendetta, and then I'm like, no. Whatever it is, he's in bed cuddling with Harry and Megan and, and Marcus <laughs> Yeah. after dinner. They had too much uh, pumpkin pie. And strawberries. And strawberries. So yeah. they're just all huddled in there together, and they're watching their movies. Yeah. So sweet. They are just so they're great. Just the, the, they're, they're the new foursome. I know. They're fat they're, four. Now talk about fat four. They are modernizing the definition of family. Yeah. The book comes out on the 28th. It does. I have a feeling that we're going to probably get it leaked any second now, just like Harry's did. Somebody's going to leak it. And, and then, we'll cover all the interviews I that mean, he makes the rounds. It's going to be so Do you so think he's going to go to like Kelly and, and Mark? I don't know. Today's Animal Rescue is Reach 
rescue in Illinois coming from one of you. We love it when you guys give us suggestions because it gives us a chance to learn about new rescues. There's so many across the country. This is a foster based program. Those are very important because we need fosters out there because when groups pull animals out of high kill shelters, they need to go somewhere before they get adopted. So that's why fosters are so, so important. So we 100% give our support to reach rescue. I will put the link in the description below. Please pass it along to your friends. We'd really appreciate it. The holiday season. So we're going to have a, a onslaught of suggestions, I'm sure, in our DMs. And yeah. we're going to try to get to every single one of them. Yeah. So just keep them coming. We'll talk more about this OB. OB? Obi Wan Kenobi. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk more about this Omid, and we'll show the beautiful gowns and tiaras from the state dinner tomorrow during our live. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow <laughs> with all the royalty and all the who knows what will pop happen. culture stuff, <laughs> and maybe a little football mixed in with Travis Kelsey. Oh, and God. Taylor Swift. No. And maybe have dad no. call in and talk about. My favorite part of the live yesterday was what dad was like, I know football. I know football. And it it seems like they're the real deal. Yeah, because he they're knows. They're the real deal. I, I've watched a lot of football players in my life. My dad does this really funny thing whenever, like, it could be any topic. It could be any topic. Pick any topic, OK? You want me to? Just just out of out of your head. Grasshoppers. Okay. He'll say this. I've been in the photo finishing business all my life, so I think I know a bit or two about grasshoppers. He will say that every single time, and it's hilarious. I'm not kidding. But my dad last night around 10 o'clock at night texts me um, this article about Travis Kelsey being alone on Thanksgiving and singing in his car Taylor Swift songs. And then I said, well, Taylor's in Brazil, um, so you know, I bet they were FaceTiming a lot. And dad texts back and goes, yeah, I agree. This is so it's so like stupid. it's just so fun to have something now with my dad. It's you a know, fake relationship. It's no, a fa no it's my a dad fake. and I. No, it's not, not a fake. Not relationship. you and Dad. I, Tra Travis Kelsey and, yeah. and Taylor Swift. This is the fakest relationship I've ever seen in my life. Comma is a guy on the Chiefs. See you tomorrow. Bye.